Good afternoon, Robert Scribbler. It is August 27, 2018. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, we're going to provide some meta-analysis or reanalysis of basic scientific research showing that human beings or showing how human beings are responsible for 100% or more of the present global warming trend that we see now. But before I get into it, I'd just like to cite the sources for this analysis, namely Zeke Hostfather and Michael E. Mann. Zeke recently wrote an, an, an analysis of, of why humans are responsible for the majority or, or more than 100% of warming. And Michael Mann recently responded to, to Zeke's analysis on Twitter, which I thought was an important scientific response to, to a good bit of climate, climate journalism. So answering the question, how, how much of human emissions, or I'm sorry, how much of global warming are humans responsible for? And, and how do we know humans are responsible for the majority of the warming that we see or 100% or more of the warming that we presently see. And so number of factors that we, we look at are one is, is solar variability and, and solar activity does go through a, a cycle, but the cycle is, is, is relatively mild and has a very moderate impact on the Earth's climate system. And overall, the radiance from the sun hasn't changed much since the 1850s. And so scientists know just by observing the sun and how much radiance the sun is producing that the sun is not the source of climate change that we see today. Moving on, a, another culprit that is often cited by climate change deniers is volcanoes. And though volcanoes do emit a degree of carbon dioxide, as noted in this climate.gov article from June 15th of 2016, the amount of carbon dioxide emitted by volcanoes is, is very small compared to human sources. And if you look at fossil fuel emissions versus volcanic emissions of carbon dioxide, as you can see, volcanic emissions have remained rather steady and, and very low in comparison, in like in the gigaton, one, less than 1 billion tons per year range, whereas fossil fuels in recent years have emitted more than 35 billion tons of CO2. So the emission from volcanoes is, is likely about 1 60th or 1 100th of, of the human-based carbon emission. It's also worth noting that volcanoes also emit sulfur dioxide into the upper atmosphere, which, which tends to cool the Earth somewhat especially after large volcanic eruptions. So, so the net effect from volcanoes is actually a little bit of cooling. Now, another area that, that tends to get talked about is, is aerosol pollution in general. And the issue with aerosols actually is that it has a net cooling effect on the earth. And these are the particles that, that are produced as a result of, say, for example, burning coal. Now that's, that's separate from the carbon dioxide molecular emission from coal burning, which has a high warming effect. But the light scattering particles that are reduced, such as soot or, or sulfur dioxide from pollution such as coal burning has a net cooling effect. Now looking at land use, the way humans change the surface of the earth to a certain degree, uh, the conversion of, of dark far forests to paler pastures have, has a albedo effect. It increases actually the reflectivity of the earth's surface. And this, this changes the earth in such a way that, that reflects more light. Now, land use changes can also produce more carbon dioxide 
and methane and nitrous oxide, and that has a warming effect, but that's related to greenhouse gas. If you're looking at the actual physical change to the land in the form of albedo change, it actually has a cooling effect. And the last aspect is, is ozone pollution, which actually increases the temperature of the lower atmosphere. Uh, but ozone, in, in, in this manner, acts as a, a, a bit of a greenhouse gas. So, but overall, the, the driving force, occur, according to present climate, are the traditional greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide and methane and nitrous oxide and chlorofluorocarbons, of which carbon dioxide produces the greatest forcing. And so overall, the net effect from, from humans producing greenhouse gases has produced 100% or more of the warming that we see. And one of the indicators that we have for this warming trend, this, this counter cyclical warming trend, because, because what's going, what was going on before human beings produced a massive amount of greenhouse gases was that the earth was gradually starting to cool off and, and likely heading toward another glacial period as we have seen over the past 1.2 million years, a, a cycling between glacier and inter, interglacial periods during the Pleistocene period. So this, this graph is, is the famous hockey stick graph produced by Michael Mann, which is one of the main indicators of this long-term trend of cooling that we saw until humans began emitting a massive amount of greenhouse gases into the Earth's atmosphere. And so the net effect of greenhouse gas emissions has been more than 100% of the warming that we have seen because it's wiped out a natural cooling trend. And to this point, Dr. Michael Mann notes that, I hate to be pedantic, but our best estimate of is the mid-range point or approximately 110%, or, or meaning that 110% of the present warming that we see is caused by human activity because humans have wiped out a bit of the cooling trend and providing, provided warming on top of that wipeout of the cooling trend. So in other words, according to Dr. Mann, we are most likely responsible for more than 100% of observed warming because there was likely a small natural cooling period over that time period. And Dr. Mann here provides the best guess range based on fractional a fractional attribution to human causes of warming based on this bell curve here. And note that the bell curve falls on the 110% line of the graph. So just an analysis of overall causes of human-caused climate change as it relates to various factors and, and a note that, that we should understand that, that not only have we warmed the earth, are we responsible for, for likely 100% of the warming that we have seen, but we've also warmed the earth out of what appears to be a longer-term cooling trend. So, so human activities, primarily greenhouse gas emissions, are responsible for likely 110% of the present warming that we have seen. I encourage you to take a look at the foundational articles and videos and, and scientific comments for this analysis that I have provided. I will be providing the links for you to dig deeper into this subject. Thank you for joining me, and I will be chatting with you soon.